Hey everyone, so we're doing a stream recap for the Kingpin 2080 Ti overclocking. Joe was here for that one, and uh, I set up the CPU beforehand. Joe took care of the GPU during the stream. So we're going to walk you through the results we had for the GPU overclock and how high we were able to get a 2080 Ti in clocks. Before that, this video is brought to you by Drop and their HD 6XX headphones, built on top of Sennheiser's flagship HD 60 headphones. The 6XX headphones offer high-quality audio output with wide device compatibility. Masterop's 6XX also includes a 6-foot cable with 3.5mm plug alongside a quarter-inch adapter for those who might want to plug into an amp. The 6XX focuses its energy into balancing the sound, leaning toward warmer and bassier audio. They're also easy to disassemble and replace individual parts, making these headphones trivial to maintain for long-term use. Learn more at the link below. So we, we had some trouble with the overclocking, uh, but we got pretty far. And first I'll point out that once again, there were several overclockers in the chat. So Roman, Der Bauer joined for a bit. Check him out on YouTube if you don't know who he is. Uh, actually, Hardcore Overclocking, AK Buildzoid was in there. And then t uh, Tin, XDevs from, from EVGA, EVGA, was in the chat. So a lot of fun hanging out with them. And Joe, of course, from Bearded Hardware on YouTube as well, linked in the description below. So the overclocking, do we want to, let's start with where we ended up. So people get a quick recap. Frequency? About 2600. So yeah, we were just shy of 2600 megahertz. And to give you point of reference, uh, 2080 Ti overclocks, like an XC Ultra or a reference card, probably gonna be in the range of 2050 megahertz, maybe up to 2115, like briefly under cold conditions uh, with a stock cooler. So to go from like 2050 to 2600 or 2580 is pretty damn good. Yeah, it's not so bad. That's, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, I think if we, we had more time and we got to play with the mount, because obviously the paste in the mount is pretty much key. So using swapping in a lot of time, I mean, we've been working for pretty crazy the past couple of days. And yes, yes it going, yesterday so. we did about 16 hours and there was a whole day before that. Yeah, another day before plus that. Plus your flight. So. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, so, so yeah, we we could probably yeah you push it harder if we weren't under a stream condition, but it is pretty pretty good. Yeah, well, we also were chicken clocking too. We were chicken clocking. We we're stepping it up incrementally. We had to make the stream more interesting. Yeah, <laughs> so twenty uh, about 26, 2580 megahertz or so. The highest power consumption number I saw when I was monitoring it was about uh, six hundred and eighty six seventy nine watts, I think. Yeah, and times triumph or times by extreme with uh, GT two. GT two. GT two is the more powerful one. Yeah, so that's a yeah, pretty good amount of wattage. Yeah. Um, do you know what voltage you were running at the end? Was it one? Um, I think at the end it was about either about 1.4. OK. Yeah. So yeah, we were 1.3 to 1.4 most of the time for the NVVDD, which is the basically the core voltage. Yeah, it's basically GPU voltage. And then and there's? Then, and then when, uh, I forget what it's called for the, the next one is basically memory voltage. FBVDD. We're at, yeah, we're at 1.5 on that one. Yeah. And then we were doing about pretty much, uh, was it plus 1600 on mem, which is, um, what is it, 2150 on memory, if you look at GPU-Z? Like yes, I think that is correct. Yeah, 2150. And then uh, scores. So to give you an idea of what, what does that mean for score, I mean, like, so <clears throat> LN2 overclocking, as we said in the stream, it's, it's about having fun, really. And there's a competitive side of it. But if you're kind of watching and wondering, like, OK, well, what does this teach me from a, a perspective of the architecture? How much does the architecture scale with that frequency increase? Well, with Time Spy Extreme, and this will not apply to everything, games will behave differently. But we saw a jump from our original base score, GPU score only, was 75.77. And the I didn't record the final, final score, but we were at 96.27 when we had a 450 offset. and the percent increase there uh, versus 75.77 is a 27% increase from a clock increase of about 450 megahertz. Yeah, it'd probably be more, a little bit higher with the last one. We didn't. We didn't. A little higher if we had recorded yeah. that one. And then 54.86 for GT2 for the FPS versus the original 44.48 gives us an increase of about 23%. And then 59.21 GT1 versus 48.11 GT1 is an increase of about 23% as well. Yep. So there's your percent scaling from a, you know, a couple hundred megahertz increase, 450 megahertz increase. Yeah, and that memory increase is quite, quite good on those Samsung MEMS. That's yeah. kind of one of the sh 
cool things about the Kingpin card is that not many people talk about is the Samsung Mems. Yeah. That's not on all the other cards. Yeah, I mean, it's guaranteed Samsung Mems. Yeah, guaranteed. Some some here do have it and some don't, but you're guaranteed with the Kingpin card to get the Samsung And they do Mems. clock better. Yeah, it does clock much better. Yeah, so there's your quick recap of the numbers. Uh, the card itself, will show some footage at some point in this video too of when Joe was breaking it down and, and rebuilding it a couple times. You, uh, so when you were breaking it down, you um, used the, the hand dryer in the bathroom to dry yeah, it off. I was trying to be quick. Yeah. It actually works pretty well. I probably should have spent a little bit more time on it, but we we're also live streaming it, so yeah. it's a little difficult. But. And then you torch the pot. So torching the LN2 pot helps kind of prime it. Yeah, basically to get uh, a better transfer so I can hold, hold temperatures better. Right. And then, uh, man, it's got a lot of condensation on there right now. Well, yeah, it's turned off. It's yeah. at minus 15 right now. Minus 15 still. Yeah. So temperatures the whole time, what, what were you uh, Most of the temp here? was between, I would say, between minus 100 Celsius and minus 130 Celsius. I didn't really push any more than that. The co we benched for pretty much four hours, so yeah. the card's been pretty cold, and it's kind of battling that. Yeah. yeah. When you're, you're battling card that or cold that much, it, it causes a bunch of issues, so... Yeah, yeah. And then for the bench, if you missed it, during, I'll link the parts below again. But uh, we ran Trident Z memory royal, uh, royals. and Yeah, the silver and gold. That's right. And we had that set to 4,000 megahertz in the uh, BIOS. And then I, I just set quick timing. So it's like 15. I just yeah, did 15. CL15. Then you yeah. can do better. But we weren't trying to do CPU. Or yeah, these modules actually do much better on, on the smaller platform. Right. So it's a dual channel kit. And so. we only have a 360 CLC on the CPU. So it wasn't under LN2. We're focusing on GPU today. Yep. Uh, 4.8 gigahertz on the 9980XE, and then 32 mesh. Um, I think that wraps up the components. We used a lot of LN2. Uh, this is almost completely empty at this point. Yep. So I think I filled that doer once during the stream. Yeah. So we probably used like maybe, maybe 40 liters or something. What, just today? I think yeah. so. It's if we had a CPU container, we would have went through a lot more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been pouring ch 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 This was once we, so at the very end, we'll cut a clip in too if we can find it. At the very end, the stream got really active where Joe was like pouring every couple seconds. Yeah. Because you're really on that minus 124 number. Yeah, you have to keep it at a certain temp, and that, that's where the torching comes in. If the, I didn't torch, you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. So that's very important. I have to do it every single time. So just take longer to react if you don't torch it? Well, it just won't even react. It okay. will basically, like, your temperature, so, like, say the bench starts at minus 130. The bench will basically start heating up, so you'll go to, like, minus 120 real quick. And even if you're pouring, it's not going right. to basically bring the temperature back. So by torching it, it basically gives a, it, it uh, primes the pot so that way when I'm tapping it like that, you'll see in the video where I'm basically pouring, you're, I'm reacting. It will actually allow it to react better. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. And then uh, frequency-wise, so for that baseline, just to give you an idea of, we're talking about this on the stream, but frequency scaling versus cold. So the stock KP card with like the original cooler runs higher than most other cards. It's, it's about 20, 40 megahertz flat. It's like fixed because it's running so cool, 55 degrees or less. And then um, and that's 20, 40 megahertz. And then just putting it under LN2 and not overclocking anything, no changes, just liquid nitrogen in an LN2 pot, and you weren't even that cold for the stock baseline run. No. Um, I think that was 20, 80 megahertz or something like that. I think it was even higher than that. So, yes, yeah, so like, the as the temperature goes down, the frequency goes up, and then yep. you apply the offsets also. So it's not as easy as just saying like 450 offset. Okay, 450 plus base equals the final number. That's yeah, it's more kind of hard to tell. Yeah, you have to basically bring it cold, find out what the locked value is, then you add the whatever voltage you set or not voltage, but your the clocks you right. set from there, and then that's how you get your calculated number. So, and it's different per per GPU. So. Yes, that too. They have some variance. So yeah, uh, pretty close to 2600 megahertz. Can't really be. Too mad at that. Yep. And we'll try and do more with this. Uh, Joe and I will both be at Computex, so make sure you subscribe to both of us to catch that coverage in the next couple of weeks. It'll be in Taipei. And uh, I think that's going to wrap our videos for this weekend. So we're going to go sign more mouse pads. Yep. Joe, Yay. thank you for joining me. Thank you, sir. Find him, Bearded Hardware, on YouTube. Yep, right here. Or beardedhardware.com. And <laughs> you know where to find us. We'll see you all next time.